virgin most powerful radio sharing the gospel with clarity and charity i'm a soldier for christ i'm a soldier for christ i'm a soldier no they'll never take us under because we're bringing truth like thunder Raining on your speakers like a ton of bricks Hold the cross high cause we'll cap those licks Fight the good fight with the truth Stand tall with the truth I'm a warrior for Christ I'm in love with the truth Love God, save souls, slay error Go stronger Welcome to the Terry and Jesse Show Happy Feast Day of St. Joseph the Worker Today's going to be a special edition. I have Father Charles Murr with me. Father Murr, welcome to the Terry and Jesse Show this Friday. Thanks, Terry. Thanks. Thank you. And Father, I know you have a devotion to St. Joseph, and so do I. And um, I want to talk a little bit about St. Joseph. But before we actually talk about St. Joseph, I'd like to do our usual format, which is read the Gospel of the Mass for the day. And uh, if you could be so kind to read the Gospel of John to us, I would appreciate that. Certainly, with pleasure. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, Whoever eats this bread will live forever. These things Jesus said while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Wow. I love this gospel. Well, it's pretty clear, isn't it, Father? The real presence. As, 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 a, as my... My, my Jewish neighbor in New York, back in New York, used to say, what's not to love? <laughs> there you go. What's not, what's not to love? This well is, said. This is, the the yep. gospel of, of St. John is a beautiful one to begin with. Mm-hmm. But chapter 6, the discourse on the bread of life is uh, remarkable. It's absolutely uh, remarkable. It's stunning. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's powerful. I think it's the most powerful thing that John has in his gospel yeah. because uh, he, he, uh, he speaks so clearly uh, about the the bread of life, uh, just recently, Terry, I don't know if if you're Tell aware, me. but we had a a Protestant uh, minister. I wish I could remember his name. Oh, Chan. He was Oriental. Uh, here, yeah, on YouTube. Yes, Chan. Yeah. Did you did you did you speak about that already? Yes, but go ahead. No, tell us more because this is an important point. Uh, yes, I, I did. I, go ahead. You know, I at, at, uh, after I finished the day, I like to go through the YouTube uh, things yeah. and uh, listen to the remnant, listen to this. That, Absolutely, you know, I actually, do too. <laughs> every, one, every 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 once in a while, I'll, I listen to the Terry and Jesse show. Oh no, penance! Uh, so, but this one this one time, I think it was, I, can't, I can't remember who I was watching, and all of a yeah. sudden, this uh, pastor came on yeah. about the bread of life, and I, I said, "Well, I'll listen to what he has to say." It was amazing. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. And all of a sudden, it was as if the Holy Ghost was, was mm-hmm. hitting him, was targeting him particularly, right, right. during the middle of a, of a sermon that he was giving yes. to his congregation. Right. Now, these are all Protestants. Sure. He has this moment, and you really should watch it. I, yeah. I recommend it to anybody. Absolutely. To get it on YouTube. He has this moment where all of a sudden things, something starts clicking, and he he starts talking about the importance of the Eucharist and the the uh, 
I, I'll, I'll never forget. You know, it's a funny thing because at Mass now, I remember him. He quoted this from the Catholic Mass. He said, he was talking about the Catholics, and you know, and they and they say this is the real body, the real blood of Christ, and everything Catholic is centered around that reality. Right. And they said, and and here they are talking to this 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 this. Uh, I think he called it bread, the the, the super bread, mm-hmm. saying, "I am not worthy. I am not worthy. I am not worthy. No, Lord, not me. I am not worthy." Wow. <laughs> he said. All of a sudden, it made sense that yes. for 15, 16, 17 centuries, yes. this, was, this was everything that was uh, the, the liturgical life around the Eucharist was central to the, to the Christian life. Well, he got it. And the Gospel of St. John that we're, we just heard, yes. it's, it's, it's longer than this. It's much longer than this. And he, he repeats and repeats and repeats the same thing mm-hmm. as if never tiring of, of hammering mm-hmm. home the point, the bread of life. If you don't have it, you're not with me. You don't belong to me. <clears throat> I don't belong mm-hmm. to you. Wow. Father, one this, thing he this, did this, say this, that this really t- that touched me, Father, was... Our worship as Protestants is, a, is the homily. They, they got the, uh, the preacher. And he said, but for, for 1,500 years, that wasn't the way it was. It was the worship at Mass. You know, it was a worship service. It wasn't some man-centered service. And I thought that was very, uh, being very honest about uh, the different worship. So he, I, I think everybody shall should I see you, that. Shall I give you a little trivial a trivia Yeah, point? of course, of course, Father. Ever get into a trivia test? Yeah. Or... On, until the Protestant Reformation, yes, our Catholic churches did not have pews. Wow! Do you know that? No. Yeah, there were no there were no pews. When people walk into the basilicas, the great basilicas in Rome, St. Peter's, St. John Lateran, mm-hmm. St. Mary Majors, there there are every once in a while for ceremonies or think they'll set up some chairs. Yes. But there are no pews there. There are no there are no pews. I didn't realize that. People remark at this when they walk in. What, what where do people sit? Well, the the, the answer is they didn't, <laughs> because because a priest didn't go on for twenty minutes or thirty minutes or forty five minutes preaching about this that and the other thing. It was about the Eucharist. Exactly. It was about the Eucharist. Beautiful. Receiving, mm-hmm. taking God, Christ with you, and going home. Very insightful, Father. Hey, uh, Father, before I get to St. Joseph, I wanted to, I love good news stories, and I know you're going to like this. Maybe you heard it, but a U.S. bishop is defying the lockdown and attends a rally calling on governors to close abortion centers. Bishop Joseph Coffey was part of this pro-life group, uh, and he was warned by the police to disperse, and the protesting of the Catholic, this is kind of sad, the Catholic governor, Larry Hogan's refusal to shut down abortion centers. And what I like about this, Father, is on this feast day of St. Joseph, that a successor of the apostle will stand up for life and even risk being arrested. I think we need more bishops like that. What do you think, Father? <laughs> no, I'm being serious. It was inspirational for me. You, you, think, you think we need more? Like yes, I know we do. Yes. We do. Yeah. The, the, the sad thing, the sad thing is that well, he's not alone. He's not alone because no. there are other good bishops yes. who, who say this. But the, but the majority are very, no. very careful. Very, yeah. Very no, they'll careful. stay behind the doors. They yeah. Don't say this yeah. is what this is what's terrible. You know, we were just talking about this the other day. Uh, in, uh, Henry VIII, when he took over England, the Church of England. Yes. There was only one, one <sighs> bishop. Yep. Saint John Fisher. Yep, famous. Bishop. Yep. Who, who remained faithful to to Rome. All of the other bishops were Protestant the next day. From one day to the next, they were Protestant. So the, the, this, none of this surprises me. None of this surprises me. But it's wonderful to hear one clear voice. One clear voice is a wonderful thing to hear today when, when, there are, there are, when we go through periods of silence with no voices. Right. You know? Well said, Father. Hey, uh, that's why we need to be praying for our shepherds. You know, I always joke with people. I say, I'm not in management. I'm in sales. But as Fulton Sheen said, uh, we, how is going to renew the church? Uh, he said, it's not going to be the bishops, the priests, or the religious. The lay people are the ones who's going to save the church. I want to just mention that on the feast of 
of St. Joseph the Worker. I want to bring Bishop Sheen into the room. On the, oops, the Full Sheen ahead. He has a great comment about St. Joseph. He says, No husband or wife ever loved one another so much as Joseph and Mary. And why why do I say that? I say, well, that's because St. Joseph is the model. A couple of days ago, I talked a little bit about the masculinity of St. Joseph. We're going to talk more about St. Joseph when we come back from the break. I've got Father Charles Murr here with me, and we're also going to talk after that about prayer and uh, why we need to pray and how prayer helps us not only get through life, but uh, the saints tell us that if you don't pray, you won't be saved. So that's how important prayer is in your life. So we'll do that when we come back. And I also want to thank all of the folks who came to the mental health conference on Saturday last weekend. I had about 1,200 people there online watching it. And we are going to be making the videos and the audios available. It'll be ready on tomorrow. So if you're a monthly donor for the, for the uh, Virgin Most Powerful, you get that for free. We'll give those over to you. And also, just so you know, we do have a men's conference coming up with Jesse Romero. Because of the coronavirus, we will not have the usual conference and the chapel. That will also be done online. So we'll be giving you more information on that. And um, we appreciate everybody supporting us through this time. We're trying to do the best we can to reach people with the gospel. And if that means online, then that's what we do. It's the Terry and Jesse Show. It's Friday, Feast of St. Joseph the Worker. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about St. Joseph. And then the rest of the show, we want to spend time on how do we pray? How do we get to be better at what we do is communing with God? Such an important issue to get through life and the next life. That's what prayer does. You're listening again to Virgin Most Powerful Radio on the Terry and Jesse Show. Welcome, Dan. Welcome, Daniel. You're on the line. What's on your mind, brother? Hi, I just wanted to share a testimony about Virgin Most Powerful Radio. I had a buddy at work who, you know, he's a lukewarm Catholic guy, and I wanted him to start listening to the Terry and Jesse show, so I kept telling him to download the app, and he kept putting me off. So one day, I grabbed his phone, and I downloaded the app <laughs> for him. I went on vacation, and you know, I kept telling him to listen to it. He was kind of put me off. I came back from vacation. He comes to my cubicle, and he says to me, Hey, man, I've been listening to Terry and Jesse's show, and it's great. And it's uh, made a big impact in his life. The guy, he's going to weekly adoration a couple times a wow. week. He goes to the Mass in the morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's an uh, on-fire Catholic, and he promotes the Terry and Jesse show on the Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Daniel, what a testimony, and I want to encourage our listeners to get those cards by going to virginmostpowerfulradio.org and uh, do what Daniel's doing. Go out and spread the faith by inviting people to listen to Virgin Most Powerful. Daniel, thanks for your testimony, brother. God love you. You're welcome. Jesus said to the apostles in Luke chapter 10, Whoever listens to you listens to me. And whoever rejects you, rejects me. According to St. Boniface, in her voyage across the ocean of this world, the church is like a great ship being pounded by the waves of life's different stresses. Our duty is not to abandon ship, but to keep her on course. May our Lord help us remain ever faithful to his church to aid and defend her. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871, because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, 
Here's Terry and Jesse. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse show. Father Charles Murr is with us. We're talking now about the great feast of St. Joseph the Worker, May 1st. And I have a couple stories from the saints about St. Joseph, but I really have a, a great love what Pope Benedict XVI said back in 2008. He said, if discouragement overwhelms you, think of the faith of Joseph. If anxiety has its grip on you, think of the hope of Joseph. If ex- exper- ex- exasperation or hatred seizes you, think of the love of Joseph, who was the first man to set eyes on the human face of God. Well, that's a good point. In the person of the infant conceived by the Holy Spirit in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Let us pray and thank Christ for having drawn so close to us and for giving us Joseph as an example and model of love. And Father Murr, you might have heard these stories. I did when I was young about St. Teresa of Avila. But she said that God had healed her many, had healed her through the intercession of St. Joseph. She had often told people how she was so terribly ill that she considered herself half dead. But after praying to St. Joseph, she experienced a miraculous cure. And then the one I really like is St. Teresa of the Little Flower. She said she would have died at infancy were it not for the intercession of St. Joseph. And Saints Louis and Zelie Martin, their parents were very devoted to St. Joseph. They named two of their children after St. Joseph, but sadly both of the children died in childbirth. When Zelie was again pregnant, she believed the child in her womb was a boy. And so she planned to name the child Joseph. After the birth, however, the baby was discovered to be a girl, and it was decided that her name would be Teresa. Now, shortly after Teresa was born, she became deathly ill. No one knew the cause of her illness. Her mother, already having experienced the death of several other children, was greatly saddened, but resigned to God's holy will. Fearing that little Therese was going to die. Zelie knelt before a statue. Picture this. She knelt before the statue of St. Joseph in her bedroom and asked the saint to heal her daughter. What faith. Miraculously, Teresa was healed. Teresa wrote, Teresa's mother wrote down an account of what happened in her little, about her little Teresa. She wrote, and she tells her story. Father, the reason I tell these stories is because every saint I know not only do they have a devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, not only do they have devotion to the Eucharist, but they have devotion to St. Joseph. Isn't that a fair statement, Father? I, I think you would have to. Of I course. Mean, it's, a Just, it's the whole deal. Isn't you got it. it. Package? You got it. Right? You know, Terry, you said something that, that, um, that triggered a thought in my mind, okay. and it's something that I hadn't thought about in mm-hmm. 100 years. <laughs> uh, th- there was a song very popular when I was in high school, mm-hmm. The Impossible Dream. I remember, remember that. that. Yeah, The Impossible From Dream. Man, Man of La Mancha. Yeah, mm-hmm. sure. Don Quixote. Yep. And <laughs> one of the, I think one of the one of the lines in that, a few of the lines, as a matter of fact, mm-hmm. uh, really typify Joseph and the love. You were talking about the love that he had for the Blessed Virgin Mary yeah. and the love that she had for Joseph. Mm-hmm. And we're saying that a greater love in, in human in human matrimony uh, between a couple uh, the world hasn't known. Yeah. Well, people are saying uh, people, you know, I mean, the world, the world, and the worldly would be saying that's ridiculous. How can such a thing exist? If you are also saying that they didn't know each other in in a biblical sense. Right. Well, there's a line. There's a, there are a couple lines in in the impossible dream that I think touch on that. And one of them is. Uh, to right the the unrightable wrong, mm-hmm. to love pure and chaste from afar, wow. mm-hmm. to try when your arms are too weary to reach the unreachable star, uh, that, that the, the the pure and the chaste love from afar, that's no less a love, that's no less a love, that's a, that's a tremendous love. It's a, it, it can it can be a force that rules the stars and the heavens. Uh, that love pure and chaste from afar. And I, I, I look at that Beautiful. and I think of Joseph and I think of Mary and I think of their love, their their matrimonial love, their mm-hmm. their sacrament of marriage. What a what a what a beautiful love they had. 
without without that that physical knowledge. Mm-hmm. Um, beautiful. That is beautiful, beautiful Father. And so, Saint- and you know, and there, 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 it's 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 chivalry, isn't it? Yes, it's chivalry. And yes. I think I think the reason that people don't understand that today is they have no time for chivalry because they don't understand it. It just doesn't fit into anything they would uh, they understand or would like to understand, perhaps. Anyway, well, well said, Father. Of, you know, well said. I want to move now to our topic of the day here on Feast of St. Joseph the Worker, which is really the power of prayer and how to pray. And I just want to lead off with that Bishop Sheen said it well when he said, some people look on prayer like an aviator looks on a parachute. He hopes he doesn't have to use it. Now, that's a joke he started (laughs) off. You've probably heard that in his Life is Worth Living, and I've memorized these, and it just makes a lot of sense. And so we want to teach people how to pray because I have another quote in my book, How to Share Your Faith with Anyone uh, on Evangelization. I quote St. John Paul II. He says, Prayer helps us rediscover the loving face of God. He never abandons his people, but guarantees that notwithstanding trials and suffering, good triumphs in the end. And these are just quotes from some holy men And I want to just say that if you're not asking Jesus Christ in your prayer life for more faith, then start doing that every day because this is something I encourage people for decades. I go everywhere and I say, are you asking Jesus Christ for more faith every day? Now, Father Murray, when you were a little boy, I bet you the sisters taught that. But you know what, Father? I don't think people are being taught that uh, teaching that we should be asking through prayer for more faith in Jesus Christ. Do you think that's a fair statement? I think it's very fair. I think that's very fair. I think uh, uh, I remember Tell me, was... quite clearly when we were talking, when you called me the other day and you, you suggested this as a theme, I started thinking mm-hmm. a little bit, a little bit harder on it. What would, what, what, what should I say? What would yeah. be good to say? What sure. would people want to hear or need to need to hear? Yeah. And I started, I remembered in first year college, um, or was I 18 years old? <laughs> Just a youngster. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. I had <laughs> hair and everything. It's amazing. <laughs> and the uh, the um, I, I I asked a priest. Now I can tell you today, he's gone to God. Uh, he was a, a modernist priest. Yeah, unfortunately, that's why I didn't get the answer. That's right. why I didn't get the answer. Yeah, right? yeah. But I asked him. I asked him most sincerely. He was giving a, a, a retreat. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, a touchy feely retreat, sensitivity oh, retreat, nonsense, nonsense. Yep. But anyway, I asked him. I said, "Could you please teach me to pray?" Mm-hmm. And he looked at me. He said, "Well, uh, teach you to pray? You don't know how to pray?" And I said, "Well, I wouldn't be asking if I knew how to pray. I wouldn't be asking." I said, right, "No, of I don't think I do know how to pray. I'd like, I'd like you to teach me how to pray." No, that can't be taught. I, I, it can't be taught. No, no, no. It's something very personal. You have to get your own method and this that, and the other thing. Uh, I've, I've, I've written books about it and I've, I've given <laughs> lectures. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Anyway, I asked other people in my in my lifetime who were holier. Let me put it that way. Yes. You know, Sheen, Sheen also said, if you need advice yeah. from anybody, oh, yeah. Two types let it be an older person. Yep. Or a person who has suffered much. Well said. Right? That's profound. And if you can find an older person who suffered much, you've got the right person. Yep. That's, that's exactly it. Well, I did find some of those people. Good. In life. Good. I did find them. And they gave great lessons on how to pray. Mm. Ultimately, ultimately, and this is what I'm telling you, this is the ultimate point of, of, the, of everything they said. Yes. Was that... We end everything that we pray for, that, that God's will be done. Well said. That that, that that be the conclusion of anything that we pray for or about, that God's will be done. And that God's will be our will, that mm-hmm. our, our will be God's will, that it be the same thing, that Got we it. want what he wants. Got it. Right? Yep. But there are... There are basically, and here, and you know, you said you said something which we joke about. The, the last thing you would do is pray. Yeah. When a, and you would ask people, and people would tell you if they were honest. Oh, yeah. When a problem comes up, 
they do this, they do that. They run to this doctor, they run to another doctor, they get a second opinion, a third opinion. They go back to the first doctor, this and the other thing, they talk to this. But when they've run out of everything else, hmm. they pray. Yeah, last resort. Well, sure. that's, that, you know, and we and we joke, and there are jokes about it, and I understand the levity of it, mm-hmm. fine, and, and it's it's kind of funny, and but it's really sad, isn't it? It is sad. I mean, when when the when the very first thing you should be doing, yes, the very first thing is praying and asking God's guidance to to help you find the solution. Yes, well, you know, I mean, in, invite God into the in, into the into the equation to begin with. But anyway, we go through this. Sure, there are. Traditionally, yes. in in the in, in in Catholicism, in, in the Catholic tradition, there are four kinds of prayers. Mm-hmm. First of all, I love, you know, you mentioned Saint Teresa of Avila. She's mm-hmm. probably the, uh, she, well, she's as far as I'm concerned, she's she's the greatest when you, when it comes to prayer. Mm-hmm. She just is. Sure. And her definition of prayer is beautiful because it's simple yes. and it's right on true. It is conversing with God. Yeah. It is it is conversation yep. with God. Okay, that's it, you don't we don't need to complicate it. That's it. It's beautiful conversing with God. Right. However, in to analyze that conversing with God, there are four kinds or four types of prayer, mm-hmm. and this is where we get confused because all of us think automatically when we say pray for this or keep this in your prayers and everything else that we're talking about a petition. We're talking about asking God for A, B, C, or D, mm-hmm. or a solution to this or that. There are other kinds of prayers, That's right. and those are the prayers that we ignore. Mm-hmm. That's the problem. That really is. Gotcha. The four types of prayer. Number one, adoration. Mm-hmm. The second is contrition. The third is petition. Mm-hmm. And the fourth is thanksgiving. Beautiful. Now, what what we all think of as prayer is number three, petition, mm-hmm. asking, asking. But you know, the, the I went. To, I used to go. Well, I've gone a couple times, I should say, a couple times to uh, to Still River, Massachusetts, well, to been, the Benedictine yep, Monastery. Sure, sure. Beautiful place. Mm-hmm. Great, big, great men. Mm-hmm. And the I, I want, at least one time, I was able to do the thirty day spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius wow. and, and, and get a, a great director, mm-hmm. the monks there. It's fantastic. Father, we got to take but, a quick break. I want to hear that story about your walk on a 30-day retreat. That's got to be powerful. We're also going to cover uh, about, isn't it in silence that God speaks to us in prayer? Why is that, Father? we got much more here to talk about on prayer, and I hope it'll help you have a better relationship with Jesus Christ and His Bride, the Church. In your prayer life when you're done with this show. We'll be back in a moment. Hi, this is Jesse Romero from the Terry and Jesse Show, also from Jesus 911. Let's face it, we all need to use the internet, but we need screen accountability. Why? Pornography is a huge problem, especially on the internet. And every time we tap into the internet, we get bombarded with images and temptations that degrade our humanity. So we need Covenant Eyes to block these pornographic sites and advertisements from infiltrating our lives. Covenant Eyes helps us take custody of our eyes and custody of our intellect. So I recommend you go to CovenantEyes.com and type in the promo code, the NPR, to support the network. Protect yourself and your family from the eminent threats on the Internet. www.CovenantEyes.com, code VMPR, live porn free. Thank you for listening to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Thank you. God bless you. Keep the faith. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for supporting Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And here's an easy way to support us by going to smile.amazon.com and type in Catholic Resource Center or Virgin Most Powerful Radio. 
And when you log in your Amazon account and you purchase products, a portion of it will go right back in supporting Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And it doesn't cost you a dime. I want to thank you ahead of time because that supports us year-round. May God bless you and your family. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871, because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. It's Friday. Jesse's out doing other interviews, and Father Charles Merce filling in for Jess. And we're talking about the need for prayer and the four types of prayer Father, can we get a little reset for those who just joined us? Uh, you know, you were talking about the four types of prayer and also about a 30-day uh, opportunity where you were at a monastery praying. I think that would be interesting to know about that. So let's get a reset button. The first type of prayer is it was adoration. Well, let me go. Let me let me let me go back to let me go back to this. Yes, the the, the four types of prayer. Yep. Adoration adoration would be number one. Mm-hmm. Two contrition. Yep. Three petition mm-hmm. for thanksgiving there you go now the, what, what i was telling you about the the retreat that i made the 30-day retreat yes. which was quite a, it's a luxury to have to first yes. have 30 days okay sure. and and to find someone who would be your director for this so yes. so i was i was very 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 fortunate and and everything uh everything was aligned correctly and i i, I was able to do that what I was most uh, impacted by during that time was it's following the monks' schedule of prayer. Mm-hmm. They do all of the hours of prayer uh, mm-hmm. so often as a so often as a, a diocesan priest. Uh, I, my prayer, the official prayer, would come down to lauds in the morning and vespers at night and night prayer. Mm-hmm. Office of reading, office of reading, uh, uh, and uh, noonday prayer, uh, even private prayer. You're running around so much <laughs> that you, I, you know, I, you know. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to say it, but uh, I just couldn't find time or didn't make time correctly. My own fault, but it just wasn't there. Mm-hmm. When I had all this time and I'm in the monastery, yep, uh, I was really struck by. In one week, they go through all 150 psalms. Wow. Right? They're all there. And I was struck by the time they spend in prayer adoring God. Mm. Now, that might, that, that might sound silly. No. You're saying, well, well yeah, of course, of course they're adoring God. No, no. They weren't asking for anything. <laughs> Nobody was asking for anything. It was spent adoring God. Wow. Just praising God for who God was Beautiful. Is, and always will be. Beautiful. Just you know it, it, and and it's amazing. Yep. Um, it it was really amazing. And that's prayer. And mm-hmm. and you know there there wasn't any part of it that said, you know, I'd like a this, I'd like a that, give me a, like a shopping list of things. No, it was simply adoring God for who he is, which was marvelous. That's awesome. That was the adoration, and they have it. They have it, and they have it. Uh, uh, I mean, that's ninety-five percent of their prayer time is adoration, not asking for anything, simply adoring God for who He is, which I think is a major lesson to all of us. Father, you just mentioned that about just looking and not petitioning. I think of that with Eucharistic adoration. I remember John Vianney's story where a man, um, he was spending his time a soldier before the Blessed Sacrament, and they said, well, what do you say? And the old man said, well, I just look at him, and he looks at me. I just want to be in the presence of God. And there's something about that, because living in the presence of God is really a key in the spiritual life, and that ties it right into prayer. 
So that was really a profound insight that the monks taught you of uh, being there for 30 days. I, I think you will never but forget Terry, that. Terry, Terry, don't, don't you do that when you come in? First of all, as Catholics, we have when we when we say when we talk about the presence of God, we're yes. not talking about some some spiritual place, uh, uh, you know, here there or some place like you could that that you can't get to it. No, it's right in front of the Blessed Sacrament. Yes. And when yeah. we when we say the presence of God, we mean it literally. That's right. The presence of God. That's right. And this is this is astounding for those who are not Catholic. For us. It, for us, it should be astounding that more no, <laughs> more Catholics don't take advantage of it, right? Right. But you know, but but the thing is this, and I know you do this. Yeah. When I arrive in front of the Blessed Sacrament, I'm I'm privileged to have the Blessed Sacrament in a chapel, uh, in in my home. Awesome. As as you as you are, excuse me, Terry. As you are even more privileged to have your own church. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> which is fantastic. Yeah. But how how often? I come before the Lord, and I simply say, "Here I am." Mm-hmm. Yep, that's all. That's it. Here I am, and I'm and I've come here to spend time with you. Yep, because, and you know, you know, Father, let me jump yep. in because one of the effects of living in the presence of God, and I'm just going to say it because I I read this from the Lives of the Saints. It's in my book. It preserves us from sin. Why? You're not going to if you're in the presence of God. You're not going to. You're not going to want to sin. Number two, living in the presence of God increases our faith. Number three, it strengthens our hope. Number four, it yeah. perfects yeah. our love. And the final one, I love this one, it brings us closer to our guardian angel because the unemployment rate for guardian angels is way too high. So this is the key with <laughs> prayer. I know, I, I use that line all the time, Father. That's great, that's great, yep. that's great. Yep. So let's continue on this. Talk. How, what are we going to, how, how can we help people right now, Father, in their prayer life, with all of the tribulations they're going through with this corona v- virus, where they're at home now, um, you know, what what advice would you give mom and dad and the kids regarding their prayer life? How do we jumpstart the prayer life right now? Well, first of all, I would suggest to to Catholics who are listening, yeah, uh, to to find the nearest place mm-hmm. of residence yes. of our Lord, yes. In the Blessed Sacrament, right, and to frequent that place, mm-hmm. uh, you know, th- there was a great thing too that I remember from my father. You know, we have we have different memories from our mothers and our <laughs> fathers. I remember my dad waking my brothers and and and, and me wow. up at two, three, or four, or five o'clock in the morning, depending oh. on oh on what week it was. To accompany him for one hour in front of the Blessed Sacrament at our parish. Now that explains everything. I'm well, serious. Uh, during the middle of the, you're during the middle of night, yeah. and we're the only people who were there was first of all our Blessed Lord, mm-hmm. my father, my two brothers, and me. Wow, Father! And what it was and and incredible. and that and you're 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 yeah it it was wonderful and those the memory of that is is marvelous. Yeah. It's marvelous. And and uh, and my father leading us in prayer. Wow. Not my mother, not my grandmother. That's awesome. No, my father. Yes. My father. You talk about the feast of Saint Joseph. Yes. Yep. My my father's middle name was Joseph. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> Actually, I take that back. It wasn't. Oh. I, I'm I'm Charles Theodore. He's he's Theodore Charles. Ah! But his confirmation his confirmation name that he chose was Joseph. I want to ask and your confirmation said, name, Father Charles. Well, uh, it's a, a funny story because I wanted it to be pious. Is, oh, I know why. Okay, I, I, wanted yep, I can be, see why. I wanted Holy it to Father. be pious. Yep. But the pious that I wanted was not a saint. Oh, jeez. Can't do that. <laughs> I wanted it for Pius the Twelfth. Yeah. And and I was told no because he's not a saint. You have to take a saint's name. Yep. So the 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 sister the sister I, I think her last name was was uh, was Clooney mm-hmm. or something like that, but very Irish. Yes. She suggested. Another another saint that began with a P, so I took Patrick. Good. Well, that's my confirmation name, too. We have something in common. Well, Father, talking on— We have a lot in common. We do, Father. You know what our greatest uh, thing we have in common is our love for Jesus Christ and his bride, the church, and the need to share that gospel with people. Because let's face it, without prayer, you can't be saved. That's what the saints have told us, and that's why I wanted to do this show on prayer. And you gave some advice for pray, for uh, for for parents and for just everyone— to renew their prayer life, 
Uh, but Father, um, Eucharistic adoration, it does seem that, uh, that in silence, that's when God speaks to us. Now, why is it that we have to, sh- I mean, we shut up and just listen. Why is it that God seems to speak to us? Is that, is that because, um, you know, the world we live in is so noisy? Maybe people aren't listening because of the noise and that when we, when we, when we zip the noise, it seems like we, we have a better connection with God. Is that a fair statement? That's quite fair. That's quite fair because that's the way it is. Yeah, right? it's just how it is. We've, we're, we're surrounded. We're surrounded by noise, mm. and so often the noisiest instrument around is our own voice. <laughs> Would you repeat that, Terry? I mean, Father, that was good. I need to remember yeah, that. Well, <laughs> we're surround. We're surrounded by noise, yeah. and m- many times the noisiest instrument around is our voice. Oh, God, yes, that's so true. Yeah, so true. That's true. F- Father, let me ask you a question about prayer. On you talked about Saint Teresa of Avila. Uh, and you talked a little. I talked a little bit about the little flower, but um, when we define our prayer life, isn't the rosary another form of vocal prayer and meditation as kind of like a one-two punch where they work together? Can you talk a little bit about the prayer of the rosary? Sure, sure. Well, Terry, I would take it in a broader sense. Okay. Not just the rosary, especially yeah. the rosary. Mm-hmm. The rosary is an absolute beautiful prayer, mm-hmm. but not just the rosary. Any formal prayer. Yes. Now. He's, the, the, again, uh, I had to live through the '60s, and so did you, and yeah. the '70s, and so did you. <laughs> I did. And we had we had a rejection. We had a rejection of anything that made sense. Absolutely. Anything that made sense was rejected. All right. That's true. The things that made sense was formal prayer. What do I mean by formal prayer? I mean reading a prayer from a saint. Yeah. Uh, reciting the rosary. Uh, doing a novena, mm-hmm. and you're saying, well, but that's it should be more personal than that. Not really. What these people who are saints, and, and the rosary is given by the Blessed Mother herself, mm-hmm. what they've done is they said, take this as an instrument. If you follow it, first of all, you won't stray from the truth. Right. Secondly, secondly, you'll be getting, you'll be receiving what you should be receiving in intellectual content. Mm-hmm. In the prayer, right. and thirdly, it's by somebody who's a saint. Yeah, it's by somebody who who found this in his or her own life of great worth. Take it; it's already done for you. Certainly, there can be moments moments of private prayer, you, your your own your own intimate conversation with our Lord. Absolutely, absolutely, nobody's saying not. Mm-hmm. But don't be don't be don't uh, put off these these uh, these other these other beautiful prayers. Absolutely. Here, I hear the music, so we're gonna we're gonna take a quick break right now. You're listening to the Terry and Jesse Show on Virgin Most Powerful with Father Charles Murr. He's inspiring us to fall deeper in love with Jesus Christ and His Bride, the Church, through what? Through prayer. We'll have one more segment with Father, and don't turn that dial. We'll be right back. In 1 Corinthians 13, 13, St. Paul says, So there abide faith, hope, and love, these three. According to St. Ignatius of Antioch, faith is the beginning and love is the end. And God is the two of them brought into unity. Then comes everything else that makes up a Christian. May God grant that we may attain all the virtues that make for authentic followers of His Son. How does the baby eat? Can the baby hear me? How did the baby get in there? Wow, a pregnancy can sure generate a lot of questions. But what's important is that a baby is a baby inside and out of the womb. Not just after birth, but nine months before. 
at conception. That's right, every baby is a miracle. Hello, my name is Marianne Kuharski. I'm the director of Pro Life Across America. If you know someone who is pregnant or in need of alternatives or assistance or would like to support the work of Pro Life Across America, please visit our website at prolifeacrossamerica.org or better yet, simply dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say the key word pro life. Pro Life Across America is non political and totally educational. A baby's heart is beating 18 days from conception. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871, because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Welcome back. I always like to say I'm too blessed to be stressed. I'm too anointed to be disappointed. And if hope was money, I'd be a billionaire. We're talking to Father Charles Murr about prayer, but I want to recommend something to you that Bishop Athanasius Snyder also recommends, and if you get read anything on him, uh, you'll be inspired. Uh, he's endorsing a book called Consecration to St. Joseph by Father Donald Calloway. He says this, Father Calloway has given the church a precious gift. St. Joseph is the patron of the church and the terror of demons. He said, our spiritual father will teach us to place God above all things, strive for purity of heart, maintain a profound interior life, and have a boundless confidence in the unchanging truths. Truth. Now is the time for individual families, parishes, and dioceses to consecrate themselves to the spiritual fatherhood of St. Joseph. Well, sign me up. I've had the book for a while, and I'm really enjoying it, but... Bishop Athanasius Snyder, is one of, he is my favorite bishop in the world because what he's been doing is he has been speaking the truth with clarity and charity. Father Murr, I had to get that plug in for my good friend Father Calloway because it is the feast of St. Joseph the Worker. Father, we're, we're talking about prayer and how prayer is essential to one's spiritual life. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it right back over to you, Father. Okay, when we were when we ended the last segment, we were talking about formal prayer. That's right. And why people shouldn't why people should not be afraid of it. Right. What what what's crept in to a lot of our mentality about prayer, about religion, about spirituality, mm-hmm. uh, has been a lot of uh, Eastern mysticism. All right. We've right. Got, we've got we've, we have a mumble jumble of things. It's, it's yeah. really kind of. It's really kind of sad. Yes, it and is. We've, we've abandoned our own. Uh, you don't have to go into a great deep meditative state to be praying. You don't have to do that. <laughs> this is what I think a, a lot of people a lot of people believe they're failing at because they're they're not in uh, uh, what is it nirvana nirvana or something. Yeah, something nirvana. One the, yeah, one of the nine levels or yeah. the ten or twenty eight levels or whatever it is. That's nonsense. We don't need that. We don't need that. And the formal prayers that we have written by the saints and that the church has mm-hmm. has okayed mm-hmm. has said there's nothing wrong with them. They're doctrinally sure. correct. Sure. Go on. Those those should be used. Yep. They should be used. One of the greatest ones is the rosary. And let me just explain something about the rosary that I think a lot of people ignore. Um, they ignore. I mean, they not they ignore. Uh, ignoran. They 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 don't know. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, the rosary is. It's kind of very well. It's very Jewish. Let me put it this way, in the in its form. Because what you're supposed to be doing, let me explain that last sure. time. Did you, ever, did you ever see the Wailing Wall? I did. I've seen pictures of it. I've never been there. Right. Yeah. I've never have either. Uh, I, the reason I haven't gone to the Holy Land is I don't want to be disappointed. Oh. Aren't I terrible? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to see the reality. I'd like to stay with the ideal I have. Sure. But anyway, uh, you've seen 
the 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 Jews, especially the Orthodox Jews, at the Wailing Wall. Right. Uh, what are they doing? They're bobbing back and forth, right? Mm-hmm. You remember that movie? I do. Back and forth. Yes. The heads up and down, yep. up and down, up yep. and down, back and forth. Mm-hmm. Well, that's supposed to be dancing because prayer in the Old Testament was also associated with dancing. Interesting. You remember David? Oh, yes. He danced, of course. David dancing his way into yes. Jerusalem? Yes. Right? All right. Well, this, this whole thing, the whole, what, in other words, let, I mean, let's not get crazy here. <laughs> in other words, what we're saying is body and soul. Right. Body and soul are to be incorporated in this. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. So, therefore, what the Jews are doing is they're dancing. The body is moving. While the mind is praising. So you've got these two operations going on at the same time. Mm -hmm. What is the rosary? What is the rosary? Combination, yeah. Here's where where people are missing the whole point of the rosary, and they get bored by it. The rosary is not thinking about every Hail Mary and every Our Father and every Glory Be. You're not supposed to be thinking of that. Mm -hmm. That's what the body is supposed to be doing. That's what the tongue is proclaiming in praise. While the mind, while the soul is meditating the mystery. Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. That's the idea of body and soul being, in, being one in the rosary. That the body is saying one thing while the mind is thinking another. And all of it is positive and directed to heaven, to the mother of God, to Christ, to the Father, the Holy Ghost, all. This is, this is a beautiful, beautiful prayer when understood that way. And so often we get distracted, right. or so often we don't realize that we're supposed to be thinking of the mysteries. Right. We're supposed to be meditating the mysteries. It's so sad. Again, let me just do a real quick story. In New York, I had a wake service. Mm-hmm. Right? I went to the, now, a lot of people in New York who die have children who don't live in New York City. So this was in Manhattan. So everybody has to come in from outside, right, to the wake of grandpa or of great-grandfather or great-grandmother, what have you. I remember having the, having one service, and, and at the service, I, I, I said, we're going to say the rosary. We're not just going to have a wake service like, like any sort of a, you know, just a, a sort of Christian thing. Right. Very Catholic wake service. I said, this man who died happened to have been a daily communicant, wow. and I know he was devoted to the rosary, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to do the rosary. Well, we did the rosary. After the rosary, we did the Hail Holy Queen, the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel, the, the litany of the saints we also had, right? Mm-hmm. To this, I think, no, not, not the saints of, of Loretto, to the Blessed Mother. Okay. There, were, there, were the, there was the son, one of the sons, and his wife, and their three children. Mm-hmm. Right, the three children were between ages, I don't know, eight to 14, mm-hmm. right? the three of them. Mm-hmm. Those three children remained absolutely silent during the rosary, during the litany, the prayer to St. Michael, the Hail Holy Queen, wow. silent. Their mother and their father answered everything. Because their mother and their father still remembered those prayers from childhood. Mm-hmm. And when we finished, I walked by that family to give condolences. Sure. And they were having a discussion, and the three children were absolutely astounded at their parents, mm-hmm. asking their parents, where did they learn that? How did they know how to answer the priest? Mm-hmm. They had no clue. Yeah, they had no clue because they had never. It's never been passed on to them. Too bad. They had been left out completely. That's right. Yep. But what I'm saying is, the, the, let's go back to this. The point: the rosary is a beautiful prayer. It combines body and soul. It's a discipline. The yeah. first discipline of prayer, Terry. Tell me. Is to be to be there. Yeah. Who was it? I think it was Woody Allen. What, just do it. Something. What, what did he say about work? 
what was his re- remark about uh, about uh, getting a good job and being successful at work? He said the first rule is you have to show up. Yeah, yeah that's true. Right? <laughs> yeah, the first rule of prayer yeah. is you have to show up. Right. You have to show up. Takes a little so discipline. What I'm saying is, yeah. we Catholics have the Blessed Sacrament. That's the perfect place to show up to. Amen. That's the that's the best place to show up to, right in front of Christ Jesus, right in His presence. Magnificent. It is. <laughs> it is take great. it as a discipline. Sure. You don't have to do an hour the first time. Right. No, no, no. Just stop in stop in a church and be with our Lord five minutes. Yeah, it's a visit. Stop and make a visit, yep. but do it as a discipline. Yep. Now we've got adoration, which is praising God just for being God and for everything that He's done. <laughs> That's right. And is doing. The second is contrition, asking forgiveness, asking forgiveness. I think a lot of us have done things in life that we're not too proud of. That's true. A lot of us, mm-hmm. as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact. Every one of us. Of course, we're all sinners. Well, it's time in prayer to. This is what we do at the mass. Oh, by the way, excuse me. Let me let me let me not end this session without saying that the most perfect prayer, the perfect yes. prayer, yeah. is the holy sacrifice of the mass. Amen. That is, it is the perfect prayer, and I'll explain why in just a second. Mm-hmm. But. Contrition, asking for, for God's for God's forgiveness for the for the wrong things and the stupid things that we've done. Right. Three, petition, asking a favor. You know, it's it, I I love this thing. It, it's 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 you know now that I've got your ear. You know now that now now that now that I'm here in front of you, could I ask you for this? <laughs> and and you know. I remember years ago that that uh, a television show that they had with the uh, the evangelicals. What was it? Uh, the something club or something? They had a seven hundred club. Yes, I think that was it. Mm-hmm. I was Pat watching Robertson. it because I was just I was just amazed. Mm-hmm. I, I, I was amazed at, at, at a lot of good stuff. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, a lot sure. of good stuff. But somebody recommended that I watch it. I did once. A lot of a lot of wrong things too. Mm-hmm. One of the things was that I listened to a, a woman. Uh, preacher who got up and said, she said this, I'm not making this up. She said, when I pray, she said, remember now, she had a little bit of a twang accent she said, in her accent. Uh, be specific. Mm-hmm. When you pray, be specific. Now, the other day I was praying, don't just pray, like I was, I was just praying for a car. Mm-hmm. And then I said, no, 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 I want a yellow car. <laughs> and I, funny. I, and I, I, I thought to myself, holy cow. No, it has to be, you have to be specific. Absolutely. You know. Father, I hear the music. I just want to mention Our Lady of Fatima said souls are going to hell because there's no one there to pray and make sacrifices. Your prayers have a tremendous effect on the church. Father Murr, what state should we be living in? <laughs> state of grace. And let me, before we end, the last prayer, yes. the last prayer is thanksgiving. Oh. Let's always be thankful. Absolutely. An attitude of gratitude is welcome just about everywhere. Father Murr, God thanks for joining God. us again on this Feast of St. Joseph the Worker. And this is First Friday. And this is the day the bishops are consecra- reconsecrating America to the Blessed Mother along with the Canadian bishops. So that's a good thing to do. And we want to thank you, and I hope your weekend is going to be a beautiful, glorious weekend. Don't forget, make that visit. Don't forget, pray. Remember what the saints say, one who prays will be saved. If one that doesn't pray will not be saved. That's St. Alphonsus Liguria, doctor of the church. May God richly bless you and your family. Remember, life is short. Eternity is forever. God love you. St. Faustina's Prayer for Priests. O oh my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole church, grant it love and the light of thy spirit, and give power to the words of priests, so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to thee, O oh Lord. Lord, give us holy priests. Thou thyself maintain them in holiness. O oh divine and great high priest, may the power of thy mercy accompany them everywhere 
and protect them from the devil's traps and snares, which are continually being set for the souls of priests. May the power of thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For thou canst do all things. Amen. Virgin Most Powerful, pray for us. <laughs>